Hey, Hickok 45 here with one of my favorite Colt single actions. 45 Colt. Let's load this baby up. Take some shots. There's not much I'd rather shoot. There's not uh, much I'd rather do, and there's not a firearm I'd rather fire than this baby. All right, better get my ears in. See if we can plug something here. A propane tanker. To <laughs> and a cowboy. <laughs> Click. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire five? Did he fire six? Who was watching? Who was counting? How many did I shoot? No, 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 don't rewind. How many rounds did I load? How many did I fire? Well, that's what this is about. So let's talk about it. First, let's unload these dirty, nasty empties. They're not too nasty and dirty because this is smokeless powder. <laughs> Quote, unquote, not really smokeless, is it? So yeah, single actions. Uh, this comes up quite often. Uh, why do you load five instead of six Hickok? And why does John Wayne do it? Uh, well, there's a reason for it. And uh, you know what? Let me just show you why. How's that? Well, let's use the Colt. I happen to have some rounds here with no powder, no bullet, just a primer. Let's put one in here and I'm going to half cock and we'll bring him around under the firing pin. Okay, now he's under the, I can see the primer. <laughs> you can too, probably. I'm going to let the hammer down. Okay. Now, let's say I had that in my holster, and I'm riding the range, or I'm doing anything. It's in a shoulder holster, but I'm carrying this gun around. The firing pin is against the primer. That doesn't look too good to me. Now, I know the argument is it could go off, but would it really? You know, we're, un we're inundated, aren't we, with safety rate. Have you ever bought a, uh, any kind of new appliance, anything? You look at the manual, looking for instructions. The first five pages are big orange warnings, you know, about everything. You know, do not put your head under the tire of this tractor. It could hurt. Do not stick your arm under the lawnmower while the blade is turning. You know, it's just, there's no end to it, is it? And a lot of it is really stupid stuff. And so we get to where we don't even read it. We get to where we don't even pay attention to it. I mean, really, I'm that way myself because so much of it's silly. This is not one of those things. This is not one of those things. It's not just a bunch of old guys with their old single action classic firearms being anal. It's really not, okay? And I'll show you why. Now, I'm going to put my ears on. Now, if we can assume this gun's loaded, uh, you know, it, it's the same as. It's got a cartridge with a primer. That's why. Hey, you wonder why the axe was out here, right? John got me that for my birthday, see? Okay. Now, fingers off the trigger. I'm going to hit the back of the hammer and see what happens, okay? And there it went. Now, I didn't hit it that hard. So, if I had dropped it, and it hit on the hammer about any way, it would have gone off. So there you go. That's why you don't want a primer under the, the firing pin. That one has been fired. If there had been a bullet, the bullet would have gone down range. All right. So let me take that out. In fact, show you Give you a little visual here. Okay. You see where the firing pin comes through there? Cock it, and I'm going to release the hammer. Firing pin comes through there and hits the primer. Fires it. Okay, and there it is, see? So that's where it's going to be resting. Now you could put it back on this notch here, like that, and it brings it back, but that's a very fragile notch. In fact, you get some of these older, well-worn single actions, and that notch may not even exist anymore. And, uh, it, and, and besides, if you dropped it, it would probably break that and you'd mess your trigger up to some extent, but it's a very fragile notch and it would you know, very likely break that loose and hit anyway, okay? So, you got a situation where the primer is right there. It's either against the primer already or it's gonna be when you hit it. Now, I'm not gonna hit it now. I don't wanna break my, ruin my trigger, but it definitely would, all right? Same with the Schofield. Uh, or not a Schofield, but the Model 3. Let's put one in it. I've got some others loaded here. See if we get the same reaction. So if we were to rest the uh, hammer on a live round, there it is under there. So I put it down. In other words, I'm putting six in. You know what I'm doing. Surely I don't have to put six in to 
<laughs> to give you the full graphic, but let's say it's fully loaded now. And if it's fully loaded with six, then this is going to be resting, you know, on a live, live round. Or again, I've got to bring it back and then I'm, I'm on that fragile sear. And so that's not good either. So let's bring it back around. You don't want that resting on a primer. Let's get the old axe back over here and show that it's the same with any of these single actions, Smith, Colt, whatever. How? See? So, I'm not going to break my sear just to show you that, you know, that the, the trigger sear wouldn't hold if it was at a you know, half notch there either, but that's the situation. That's why you want to just put uh, the five in. Couldn't get the number right, right? Okay, now, what I want to show you the difference is the newer firearms don't have this issue. You have a transfer bar or a bar there protects it. Now notice this rear, I don't have another single action, a modern single action to, to show you, but this is kind of the same thing. This Ruger, the Ruger single actions are like that. You see that bar that comes up there? Uh, that's what actually engages the firing pin. You notice when I pull the trigger, it hits that. And that's what hits the, bangs the, the firing pin there. You can see it in there, can't you? Now if I let up on the trigger, you see it? See that bar coming up? That bar has to come up in front of the firing pin in order for the way the hammer is cut for it to fire. So if that is down, it will not fire. For example, if I let off the trigger, I've got the trigger pulled now and I'm holding the hammer, I'm going to let off the trigger. My finger off the trigger, it's not good for the action. Now you notice that bar goes down some and it, and it won't fire, see. So that bar actually has to be up there creating uh, a little more metal there. Okay, I'm going to do something that you should not do at home. Let's cock it. This thing goes the other way. I'm going to get one of those 44 special rounds under the hammer. I'm going to let the hammer down. Okay, trigger is forward. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except that's a live round. Okay, I've got a live round under the hammer. So I'm hitting that harder than I hit the other. It's, it won't fire. That's why you can load six in the modern revolvers. Okay, even single actions, if they've got that transfer bar and all that. The old Smiths had kind of the same thing. This is an older Smith uh, Model 19. You've got a bar in here. Here it's a little bit different. It, it moves the opposite direction, and but it protects it. Once once the hammer goes down, you let up on the trigger, then it's back here. And then it's not going to, I don't have any ammo, but it's not going to move on you. Okay? So that's why with these, you load six with breakout revolvers and even the new single actions. Okay? Like Rugers especially. All right, so that's basically what that's about. You want to load five. You don't want to load six. Now, granted, here at the range, I could put six in. And, and I could shoot, because I'm going to shoot. I'm not going to carry it around and drop it on the hammer. That would be okay. But that's the next answer here. Why do you do that? You're right at the range. Well, again, I've done a lot of cowboy action shooting, and it's just a habit that I have learned, and I don't want to get away from it. That's what it is more than anything. Okay, and I want to you know, demonstrate safety. And, you know, so anybody who has done cowboy action shooting, you just tend to think in terms of five. You just do. So... Uh, again, it's not being overly anal or anything. It's just being safe and uh, operating these old guns the way they ought to be operated. And uh, it's, just a, it's just a fact. So hopefully that helps uh, explain you know, why we load five in these old actions. So if you buy one of these guns, any of these firearms, any revolvers, especially the classic uh, remakes, it could be a clone. Like this is a new gun, this Uberti uh, from Taylor's. Uh, and you could buy a Colt today. A, a, a brand new one made last week. Okay, but they're made just like this. So you just have to know whether it's the old action or it's the new action like a Ruger Vaquero would have. Okay, as to whether or not you are safe with five or six. All right, hope that helps a little bit. Life is good.